Let's get awkward. Woo! That is the title of today's message. Let me ask a question here, especially for the guys. Have you ever done something trying to impress either your wife or your girlfriend at the time? Something that in your mind it was going to be awesome, but in reality it was slightly less than that. Dare I say awkward? Well, allow you to introduce myself to the <laughs> awkwardness of this moment. I wanted to impress Amy. We have not, I had not yet proposed, but I was thinking about it. And I wanted to have her over for dinner. So I did what all good guys do when preparing a meal for your super one day hopefully becoming spouse lady. I called Domino's <laughs> and I ordered a pizza. But I had, so I preach it, hey man. But I had, I had something in mind with this. You see, before Domino's guy could come, I channeled my inner past. And in the late 80s, all the way into the early 90s, I was this guy right here. I was the Domino's delivery guy. That, that could have been me, except he has more hair. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to show my wife just how funny I can be and how bold and how daring because girls love a guy who can make them laugh. At least that's what I was told as a 19-year-old. So I said, Amy, I want you to come sit down. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to call this little 16-year-old pimple-faced guy to come deliver this pizza. He's going to come. He's going to have his hat on and his shirt. I'm going to meet him at the door. But I'm going to meet him at the door. I had seen a comedian do this once, and I knew it was going to be perfect. I put on my Domino's hat that I still had, my full Domino's shirt, and I even had a Domino's windbreaker with the little glow-in-the-dark reflective tape going across the middle in case you got hit by a, a something, you know, if you're out walking around. This is like 1991 kind of fashion, okay? And I was so ready. And I had her sitting right there on the sofa by the front door. I said, watch this. I said, here's what's going to happen. He's going to come to the door. And this 16, 17-year-old guy, he's not going to know what hit him. What hit him? I'm going to come up, and he's going to open the door, and I'm going to say, oh, awesome, thanks, good job. We'll take it from here. And I'm going to take the pizza and shut the door. Okay? And he's not going to be like, do we have a tag team ministry going? What? I didn't. Well, he looked official. So he's going to hand me the pizza. I'm not even going to have to pay him. I mean, I'll go back and pay him, but it's going to be hysterical. Just watch what happens, baby. She was so excited. So I'm watching headlights pull up. It's dark outside. All I could see are feet coming up to the door. <laughs> Bing bong. You ready, baby? Watch this. Had the hat on, had the coat, shirt tucked in. I, looked, I knew I was going to be just like this guy. And I opened the door, and I froze. Because it wasn't a little 16-year-old teenage guy. It was an older man. And this poor man, he's just out making a living, trying to make ends meet, delivering pizzas on a cold, dark Friday night. And I looked at him, and I froze. <laughs> and he looked at me. <laughs> and then he froze. <laughs> and we had the most awkward pause in history. And I didn't, I didn't know what to say. Everything I had planned was gone. The only thing, and Amy, she, you know, she's, like, she's, like, she's like, you think so fast on your feet, and you're never shocked, you're never caught off guard, you're never surprised. It was gone. And I looked, and I stood there, and he had his pizza, and the only thing I could think to come up with, like, this is my exact words, this is my quote, I went, uh, I, I used to work at Domino's too. <laughs> Just, how much do I owe you? <laughs> He's like, you don't say. That'd be fourteen fifty. I give him the money. I couldn't get that door closed fast enough, y'all. So I come over. I turned over to look at Amy, see if maybe she had just like left the room at that moment. Maybe she didn't even miss, just see that, right? I look. She is rolling. She is. She's like, what, what was that? That was so awkward. I'm like, right. What was that? That was horrible. I just, here's your pizza. I just, I was, I was so over it. I couldn't get that outfit off. It was so awkward, but I had it in my mind. I knew what I was going to say, but it was gone. You ever been that way when sharing your faith? Oh, that's awkward. It doesn't have to be that way. Today, I have good news. If you struggle with this, if without, how do I share this gospel without being awkward, without being that guy, without being weird? You came to the right place on the right day, because today we're going to dispel the awkwardness, okay? 
I, you can sit back and relax. Sharing your faith does not have to be awkward, and it certainly doesn't have to look like this right here. Excuse me, do you have a moment to spare to talk about Jesus Christ? If you do that and you invade their space, this will be the reaction. I want you to notice the sheer terror on her face. If somebody did that to me, I'd be out the door. And I'm a pastor. That is offensive. I had people come to my door just last week. Oh, God bless them. They meant well. But it was a horrible time. And we're going to look at Scripture today, y'all. First Peter has some amazing truths. It walks us through how to do this and how to not be awkward. It is some amazing stuff in the Scriptures. Here's the thing we forget. Every single person we meet, every single one, is already looking for authentic connection. Every single one of us were created not to be an island, but created to crave community. Every one of us has a, has a need to be with other people, to talk, to converse. To say, remember, God looked at man. He said, it's not good for him to be alone. And from then forward, we were meant to have relationships. We crave this community. We crave this. That's why all of us have a circle of friends, maybe a small circle, maybe a big circle. You may have lots of deep connections. You may just have a few, but you may know a million people. All of us are looking for that connection. That's why Jesus said, guys, follow me, and I'm going to make you fishers of men. Because I've given each of you a pond to fish in. So let me ask, how's the fishing going? It's not just for fishermen anymore. How's the fishing going? Last week, we looked at Zacchaeus and how the sycamore tree became the way that he could find and see Jesus. And it was powerful. But we learned that good intentions aren't good enough. They mean well, and we all mean well. I know every one of us in here has a desire to point people to the Lord, or you wouldn't be here today. But the good intentions have to follow through. We must be intentional. And one of the ways that we can be intentional to advance the gospel is to simply invite your friends to an event where the gospel is going to be presented. That's why we're so excited to partner with 30,000 other churches across America on September 17th to have this calling back to the church, the National Back to Church Day. It is going to be an awesome event, but only if we do our part. Only if we, even if you feel unprepared, even if you feel clumsy, all of us can pass out an invitation like this. You should have two in your chair, okay? Do not leave these here. Take these with you. They do no good here. They have to get out there, okay? We have 100 more of these that are ready. This is something, so this is just an engager. Hey, you've got something cool coming. I'm going to show you how, how we can use this later. But this is, this is the bare minimum. At least invite them where they will hear the good news, where they will meet awesome, good people who aren't that weird, right? We're not always awkward. Some of us are, well, I am, but you guys are pretty cool. And they're going to come, and they're going to hear great music, and they're going to sing great songs, and they're going to see great food, and they're going to have continental breakfast and donuts and all kinds of stuff. But more than that, they're going to hear the gospel. They're going to hear the great news, and it's going to be an awesome day. It is a win-win for them, because if they have young children, they get to go to children's church, which we're expanding, and they can go, and, and, and they're going to love it, and it's tailor-made just for them. We've done everything we could to pray, to prep, to be ready for this, to take away their excuses not to want to engage with you in the Lord's church on the Lord's day. Now, we're already praying for this. We're already prepping for it. Yesterday, we had an awesome, huge, fantastic group of you come and show up Y'all, it was amazing. You inspire me. We, we did so much in here. Over, I think 55, 60 people showed up, gave their Saturday. I know that is your day off. You gave hours and hours, and I can't thank you enough. It was awesome. One of the things we did was we finally renovated the men's room. We took a follow me and I will make you fishers of men theme and carried it into there. We kind of a, 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 not an aquatic theme. What's the word I'm looking for? Nautical theme, okay? Where you can go in, and it's just a reminder where Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So when we go in there, we'll see that. We'll think, you know what? This is what he's called us to do. He has given us a pond, a mission field that only we can reach. So as the old fisherman would say, how's your fishing today? How you doing? Because Jesus has called us to be fishers of men, and he's given each one of us a pond to fish. And your pond, unlike real ponds, this pond is stocked full of fish. Huh? Huh? Fisherman, you with me? No? Not so much? That's okay, because I'm not a fisherman either. If this nautical thing, if this fisher thing doesn't do it for you, if you're thinking, Pastor, I don't get the whole fishing metaphor, it doesn't work for me, I can't tell the difference between a catfish and a jellyfish, that's okay. You're in the same boat with me. Let, me. let me explain it in other words. Jesus is saying, your pond 
is full of fish, but your fish have names like neighbor, coworker, classmate, family member, that server at your favorite restaurant, maybe that person who serves on your kid's sports team, the person who delivers your mail, the lady at the local checkout, your workout buddy at the gym. You get the idea. That's the name of your fish. It's not bluegill and red drum. and the, Oh, no, no. We're talking about fish Jesus died for, humans that we come in contact with every single day. So how do we approach them? How do we open that door? How do we share the gospel without being weird? Well, imagine my surprise when I'm scrolling through my Facebook feed and I come across Robert Hillier's post called, How to Share Your Faith Without Being Awkward. It's beautiful. I'll sum up the whole thing in one sentence. He says this. He says, sometimes we, that's you and I, just need to be reminded that you are in a specific position for a reason. God has got you right where you are for a reason. You've been led to a specific people, to be a light in a specific place, in a specific time. Man, I love that. You're not there by accident. You're not at that doctor's office by accident. You're not at the strong center by accident. You, you are there because God has appointed this moment, and he is going to have open doors for you. So the question is, what do you do once that door is open? Do we even know it? Because sharing our faith doesn't have to be awkward, as we're going to see here in 1 Peter chapter 3. Go ahead and pull that up. Pull up your favorite Bible app. Turn with me there. And while you do that, let me welcome our online campus. It's great to have you with us, whether you're at home or out of town or streaming with us in the car. It is great to have you. 1 Peter chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 15 and 16 here as we dive in. Follow along. It says, but in your hearts set apart, your Bible may say revere even. That's an awesome word. Revere or set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with obnoxiousness and brashness. Oh, yours doesn't say that? Do this with gentleness and respect. Oh, well, Pastor, that's a whole lot different than being obnoxious. Yeah, we're going to look at this. Keep a clear conscience so that those who are speaking maliciously against your good behavior in Christ will be ashamed of their slander. Wow, oh, that we would live such a way. People can't even slander us because it backfires on them. Listen to what the NLT says. It says, if someone asks you about your hope as a believer... Always be ready to explain it. Wow, what a beautiful, simple way. And then he goes, but do this in a gentle and a respectful way. So there's the first admonition right there out of 1 Peter. Don't miss this. Have an answer ready. This is the key part. Don't miss this. This is what will set you up to not be awkward, okay? There is a secret here. Don't be surprised. Don't be caught off guard. I can't tell you how many times I've been, I think, through things. I remember it was one of our first times. Amy and I, we, were, we, had, we had just gotten married. We're driving in the car, and I'm in my own world, and all of a sudden, I feel like she's staring at me. I just kind of casually look over, and she's just laughing again at me. I'm like, what is wrong? She says, what are you doing? I'm driving. She says, no, you're having a conversation. What are you talking about? Your lips are moving a mile a minute. I said, are they? She said, yeah. I said, oh, okay. She says, oh, no, no, no. What were you saying? I got to know. This was a great conversation. Who are you talking to? What is going on? I said, well, smarty pants, if you must know, I am going through the conversation I'm going to have with our new neighbors when they move in next week and finding out what I'm going to say and how to work conversation over to invite them to church. She's like, what? I said, Yeah. I like to plan ahead. I want to be prepared. I don't want to have another Domino's pizza moment. I want to think ahead. I want to have an answer ready. There is an admonition. Pastor, you're telling me I need to go memorize some five-point plan and get a doctoral dissertation ready and know the Romans road and say, I am not saying that. Don't complicate this. Let me show you in a very practical way how this can unfold in the real world, okay? Are you ready? For example, Monday morning, you go to work. You're sitting at your round table or your big mahogany table with all your coworkers, and you've got the CEO there. It's your Monday morning marketing meeting, and the whole staff's there. Clock strikes nine, everybody's in place. That is not the time to say, before we begin, can I share what the Lord showed me in Leviticus this morning in my quiet time? Don't do that. That's awkward. That's weird, okay? Let's put it in another real-life situation. Let's say you're with the guys. You're playing basketball. Three-on-three, three, weekend warriors, the over-40 crowd. We're having a great time. 
and you're balancing it, you're having a great time, you look up, there's three seconds left on the clock, George throws it to me, I'm thinking, should I dunk? Should I, well, should I dunk, right? Should I throw it? Should I pass to Elliot? What do I do? I got to do something. And then you look and you realize, three seconds, two seconds, and you don't know whether to call a timeout or what, and they're counting on you, and you're wide open because you can't make this shot, so nobody guards you, and you go to shoot, and then you say, you know what? Hey, guys, anybody got any prayer requests? How awkward would that be? That's not the right time to do Can you imagine? You go and go, hey, I was just thinking, you think Jesus is coming back before the tribulation or after? Because this whole rapture thing is really fascinating. And you pass the ball, you will get beamed with that ball because it's awkward. That is not how to share your faith. Don't do that. Don't show up at, at work with your shofar ram's horn. Blow a few blasts and say, the Lord thus saith through me unto thee. That's weird. That is so awkward. And that is not what Peter said. He says, you need to have a simple way prepared, ready to share. Let me show you how to do this. Somebody comes up and says, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Movie on Friday night? Cool. Soccer game with the kids on Saturday? Sweet. Church on Sunday morning? Nice. Right there, you have just opened the door. They might even come and say, you go to church? Where you go to church? Boom, and the door is open. You see what just happened? You have revealed through your weekend what your priorities are. And just like their soccer and their sports involves participation, so does following Jesus. Being in here, this involves your participation. It is a natural flow of your life. You're not awkward. You're not weird. You just told them, hey, I'm going to go see a movie on Friday night. I got a soccer game on Saturday. I'm going to be at church on Sunday morning. It's awesome. And then they may even take the next step and say, why do you do that? Really? You believe, what, what do you believe? Do you, where the conversation goes from there is unknown, but that's okay. The door is open. You can just go, you know what? I believe in God, and he helped me out. I was once so guilt-ridden. You, I'm glad you didn't know me when I was young, but he forgave me, and it's been awesome. Or, do you really believe that stuff? Yeah, I do. He, he saved my marriage. Really? Boom. The door is open. Do you really believe that stuff? Man, I prayed my kid had a terminal disease. Let me show you what God did. This is incredible. We called the church together and, and on and on. Just be normal. Just go right in. Tell them. You're, you're one beggar telling another where they found food. Do you see? You don't need to memorize a 75-page doctoral dissertation to say, I found God and he changed my life. Here's how. That's it. Have that opening sentence memorized, ready to go, and then see where the Holy Spirit leads. Pray about this. Where the conversation goes from there is up to the Holy Spirit. And if the door continues to open, walk through it. That's all. That's all he's asking you to do. Are you available? Lord, send me. Here am I. Okay, I'm going to send you. Oh, no, not to him. <laughs> Lord, here am I. Send me. Just like Isaiah. Just send. Oh, there? No, I didn't mean there, God. I mean, are we available or not? And when the door opens, go through it. But be respectful, which brings us to the next point that Peter has. Be respectful of the timing and the atmosphere. Oh, buddy, this is so important. Be respectful of the timing. Look what he says here. He says, do this with gentleness and respect. Peter goes on, he says, not only should, is it wise to, in the first step to, to have your answer ready, but when you share it, you need to have respect and gentleness dripping off of you. You don't need to be obnoxious. You don't need to be that guy. Those people that came to my door last week, I don't even know what church they represented, but I'm not going. It won't be there. Amy and I went to visit a, a workout club. Oh, it was close to our house. It just opened. We're like, woo, let's go see what kind of childcare they got. Amy says, I have 15 minutes, and then my piano students start arriving. So we got five minutes that we can get in there, in and out. I said, done, no problem. So we go in, open the door, and I tell you what, the shark started circling. I felt like I was in a used car lot, and they jumped all over. I said, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, I, I've been to the gym. I just want to look around. Can, do you mind if I go over here and look? Where's your child care? Up there? Okay, cool. We just wanted to go, no, 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 you don't need to see that. Just come into my office. I don't have time to go to your office, buddy. Oh, well, just come on. Let me show you. What are your rates? Can you just tell me your rates? Just, I, I know my way around the gym. You know, do you got the little wimpy universal stuff, or you got some free weights, like the manly stuff? Where, where's your good stuff? Well, it's over there, but what you need is a special. You need a deal. Come with me. All right, you got four minutes left. Go into the office, we sit down, and out comes the presentation. Oh, here's what we got. We got this. We got not answering any of our questions. Just going on a spiel. And I look at Amy, 
And I look back at this guy, and then Amy's like, now we got two minutes left. And then we got to go. That, that student is going to show up. That mom has paid for that time. And they, we're not even going to be there to open the door, let alone be ready to teach. One more minute left. Finally, he wraps up. I said, I said buddy, we got to go. We're out of time. And he goes, no, 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 I'm not done yet. And I said, you about are. And he said, really? I said, we got to go. It's the first thing we said when we came in. We didn't have time for this. We just wanted to see your place. I was trying to be very respectful. He says, Mr. Mitchell, what can I do to earn your business today? Without missing a beat, I said, the first thing you could have done was to show my wife respect for her time. Now we have to go. And I don't even want to be here. You know, it was so awkward. Like, come on, babe, we got to go. He was not respectful of our time. When we intrude on people's space and we're up in their business and they have given us signals and we continue to force a door open, not good, church. We repel more people than we attract. Be, Peter's saying, be respectful. Be aware of that time and the atmosphere. Long before you even leave your house, we need to have been praying and asking the Holy Spirit to give us a sensitivity to the people we'll come in contact with. Start with that. That guy, he could have had our business if he had just answered our things and, and allowed us the time to do what we needed to do, and we could have come back. But he was not sensitive to her need or respectful. And because of that, he lost us forever. I will not go. They could pay me to go, and I won't go back to that place. That's not what I'm looking for. And we do the same thing in our, in our church world. Remember, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I knew right away that guy didn't care about us. He wanted my money. He wanted me to sign up. I was another notch in his little belt for clientele. We can't do that. Now, listen, while we're at work, I get it. We're there to actually do work. But what can often go overlooked is how we are put in direct contact, direct relationship with people who need God's love and need his forgiveness. So here's the thing. Know that all around us are hurting people and be sensitive to that. Look in their eyes. There was a great song written in the 80s called, People Need the Lord. People need. You know how that was written? The guy was sitting there ordering food, and the server came up, and he said, can I take your order? He said, yeah. Can I? And he looked into her eyes, and he said, oh, my goodness, he could see the pain. She walked away after taking his order and said, every day they pass me by. I can see it in their eyes. Empty people filled with care, headed who knows where. People need the Lord. Became one of the greatest songs of the 80s because he was sensitive, and he looked. He got out of his world, and he looked into their eyes. How are you doing with that? How many people have you looked into their eyes just today? Have you found a way that you can meet somebody's need? There are people hurting around us. Peter is reminding us of the obvious need to be respectful, to be kind always, because everybody is fighting something. Every one of us is walking around people who are fighting battles we know nothing about. If we keep that in our mind, man, people, we will stand out. We'll have opportunities throughout our whole day to show kindness, to show love, to share our faith, which brings us to our last point. Live with love. And then work with excellence. Live with love, but work with excellence. This is so powerful. To see this example in Scripture, all we need to do is jump over to Paul's letter to the Colossians. Look with me at chapter 4. He says this, Live wisely among those who are not believers, and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be gracious and attractive. Isn't that a great word? Attractive, so that you will have the right response for everyone. So let me pause and issue you a challenge even before we get to the end here. How seriously are we taking that admonition? Have you taken any moments to know what you're going to say? Do you know what that response is for everyone, that last part, that gracious and attractive response? Have you taken any time? Or have we put more time into ordering a pizza? Have we put more time into deciding what we're going to download on Netflix? For some of us, our priorities, man, they're so screwed up. That's why this is such a passionate challenge back to what really matters. One of the best testimonies we can have, whether we're at work or at school, shooting the hoops, is how we love people and how we work with excellence, how we love God and love people, how we serve God and serve people. More than a slogan, one of the things is if we love people and we live for him, people will notice. Obviously, there's not going to be time to share our faith with everybody at work, where we can't just go, hey, let me tell you what Jesus did for me, and you go into this long testimony. You don't have time for that. That's why it's so important what St. Francis said. He said, we need to preach the gospel at all times, and when necessary, 
use words. Wow. You're the gospel. It's on. Your light is on all the time. It's just up to us. How dim is it? What are we doing? And when necessary, when that door opens, that's what he's saying. Have your answer ready. Be ready to shine bright. Y'all remember that beautiful story of the incredible integrity of the Amish people? It was a huge, huge story a couple years ago where this lady had hired these Amish people to build this huge barn. I mean, hand hewn out of these huge timbers. It was gorgeous and it took forever to build and they had scheduled certain months for this to go and one day she gets a knock at the door and these Amish people show up with a, ba- a bag and hand it to her and say, we're done. Well, you, you can't quit. No, 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 no. We're done. We finished. We finished ahead of schedule and way under budget and we wanted to return the money we didn't need. She opened it up, and it was cash, and she's like, what are you doing? She said, you told me the price. She says, it doesn't matter. We thought it would cost this, and it didn't cost us this, so we wanted to return to you what was rightfully yours. You think that blew her mind? Those Amish could be selling bottled air, and she would probably be open to listening to it. Whatever they're selling, man, I'm buying, because their integrity, their, honor, their actions lived integrity. Church? May I be honest, we should be of such integrity, standing out so much that people are beating a path to our door to hire us. They should say, even if, even if I don't agree with what you preach, I don't know what, but man, I love what those Christians stand for. I love the fact that they just seem to love people. They seem such integrity. They're the first ones there and the last to leave, and they're just... That I, don't, I may not dig what they're selling as far as that spiritual stuff, but my goodness, they have integrity. They should be beating up. We should be on the top of everyone's hiring list. That's our integrity. And that's what St. That's what Francis was talking about. And that's what Peter and Paul are pointing to. People are searching for people of integrity. Being known as someone who puts their best into work, I promise you will stand out. You will shine as stars in the darkness. And probably the door will open where people can come up and question, what makes you different? Boom, and your door is open, right? What is the source of your joy? What, where do you get this work ethic? How about this integrity? Holy cow. Are you returning money? That, uh, who does that? Well, followers of Jesus do. And it just leads this. But probably the most compelling and most personal reason I found this week, the reason we should share the hope within us comes from the words of Jesus himself. Look with me at Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. He says this, Whoever acknowledges me before men... I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. Oh, what a beautiful passage. Our neighbors are checking us out. People are watching, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not. People are watching. They're looking for hope all day, every day. Are you ready with an answer? Are you gracious when God opens that door? Some of you may remember that powerful story that John MacArthur shared years ago that just blew my mind the first time I heard it. The father was home, and he was addicted to the bottle, and it was a snowy night, and he wanted to get to the bar, but the snow had already come up six inches, and he couldn't take his car, thankfully. So he marched out into the cold night and began walking to the local bar, and then he sensed something was following him in the darkness. And balling up that fist, he turned around, and there was his six-year-old son, and he looked And his son was struggling with each step to put his foot right in the snowy footprints that his dad had made. And rage flew over his dad. He said, son, where are you going? And his response floored him. I don't know, dad. I'm just following in your footsteps. Where are we going? The father tells that story to this day. He says, I picked up my son, and I walked into the house. I set him down. I tucked him in, and then I went upstairs, and I bawled like a baby because it dawned on me. The full weight of my actions crashed in on me, and I said, I am a broken man. Get this. A few days later, God allowed someone to come into this man's pond, share the gospel with him, And this man became a believer and a follower of Christ. And now he shares that story as his testimony. That's how we even know the story. He is willing to share it himself. Somebody is following in our footsteps. 
Every time we take a step, people are watching. People are checking us out. What a tremendous opportunity. People are walking just behind you, putting their foot right in the footprints we have made. Family members, coworkers, friends, you name it. Do they see the gospel? Are you praying for that opportunity? Did you take the challenge last week? It doesn't have to be weird. We don't have to get awkward. Be respectful. Just be available when God opens the door. So building on the challenge from last week, last week we looked at Zacchaeus. He climbed the tree, and he became the sycamore tree, this legendary story where he could finally see Jesus. And we began to pray a daily, simple prayer that looked like this. Lord, open my eyes and help me see who needs me to be a sycamore tree in their life right now. That tree was used by God so Zacchaeus could have a life change. We want to be that tree for somebody else. And so many of you turn in cards. You wrote a name down. Man, we've got dozens. I'm still praying over them, praying with you for those people that God has laid on your heart. This is what we're doing. For the next three weeks, we're praying specifically for that one person that needs to hear the good news. So my challenge going forward this week is to continue praying this daily prayer and then look for the open door to share your faith. Watch that open door. When you pray a prayer like that, God will come through. He will open a door. Trust me. These prayers honor him. He will honor those prayers. He will show that. Continue praying this prayer. Look for the open door. At the very least, you, all we could do, the very least, is invite somebody to back to church Sunday on September 17th. Every one of us could do that. Take those invitations with you. Remember, it doesn't have to be weird. Don't be awkward. Don't be like me in the domino suit. God has showed us a better way through 1 Peter, all right? Let's pray about it right now. Bow with me. God, I thank you for the power of your word. Help us to have an answer ready. Lord, would you already prepare in our hearts what that is? When the door opens, may we not freeze. May we not be awkward or weird. May we be bold, compassionate. May we have gentleness and respect on our tongue. God, may we treat people the way we want to be treated. I pray that when they see us, Lord, they wouldn't see obnoxiousness. They wouldn't see somebody just wanting to to get another notch in their Bible belt. Lord, we want to be known as people who love because you first loved us. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.